kind of get your attention because it's so small that if you didn't see it in time, you might not be able to avoid it. Thomas Trammell has four decades of flying under his belt. Then in 2020, while soaring near Bessemer, he and his co-pilot spotted what they believed was a drone at 9,000 feet. It was kind of silver in color. It, had a reflect, it was reflection, reflecting, so it's kind of easy to see. And it just surprised us both. It was you know, not something you expect to see. Trammell reported the sighting to the FAA, and he is not alone. Since the agency started tracking plane drone encounters in 2014, there have been more than 11,000 across the U.S. We dug deeper into FAA records and found 105 drone sightings around Alabama airports during the same period. In fact, we've seen a 116% increase in our state over the last three years. People are you know, picking them up, they're buying them for their kids, they're taking them on vacation, the whole, the whole nine yards. Uh, so I would say that's a, a, a significant reason why there's so many more uh, sightings. That's why drone veteran Dave Cooper says it's important operators know they need permission to fly near airports and generally should always hover below 400 feet. He says while many new drone pilots are hobbyists and mean no harm, the growing trend increases potential risk. You go to the extreme of somebody actually using it for some nefarious reason, whether it's uh, surveillance, spying, or, you know, heaven forbid somebody actually use this as some type of weapon. Violators found flying in restricted airspace can face fines if they're caught. But tracking the operator of a remote-controlled aircraft can be tricky. That is where Cooper says the new remote ID technology comes into play. Here's how the remote ID system will work. A drone will broadcast a signal identifying the aircraft and to whom it's registered. So if anybody is breaking the rules in the sky, federal and local law enforcement on the ground can track them down. Starting in 2022, any new manufacturer will broadcast uh, an identification. Think of it as a, as a uh, license plate for that vehicle. That way, the FBI or local police can ground an illegal drone before it's too late. If a drone were to strike a portion of that tail surface, that would be probably and very likely catastrophic. Highlighting the fact that the growing, hovering hobby carries great responsibility. Well, if you want more details on each of Alabama's drone sightings, we've got you covered. We'll actually be posting a complete breakdown of all 105 encounters on our website. That's quite a bit of research there, yes, John. Definitely. You guys know I love to crunch numbers. We do. Good job at it, <laughs> for sure.